how do we surrender the impulse to dominate our um, our uh, interlocutor, yeah. uh, to, to maybe even shame them, uh, to always win? I mean, what needs to change in our, maybe even in our deep beliefs about God, yeah. His providence, His purposes? I mean, yeah. what needs to be happening in this kind of um, deeper place so that we become the kind of people who are not almost neurotically trying to dominate discourse yeah. Yeah. and shut out perspectives. Yeah. What do we need to believe more deeply that we may only hold loosely now? Well, I, to me, a wonderful model there in the Bible is Psalm 139, where the, the psalmist says um, at a certain point, Lord, I hate your enemies with a perfect hatred. You know, God, you can count on me. I'm on your side, you and me. Nah. And then he immediately, it's like he stops and says, uh-oh, and then he says, search me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I think that sense that before God, uh, we need to be saying, see if there's any wicked way in me. And then that can transfer to, to our neighbors, uh, people with whom we disagree. Uh, see if there's any, you know, what do you think of, of, of the kind of view? I, I, one of my desires in uh, talking about some of the most controversial issues of sexuality is to um, lower the rhetoric and just say to my friends in the gay lesbian movement, what is it about me that scares you so much? You know? And really to listen to that. And I hope they would listen to me when I say, what is it about what you stand for that troubles me? But I think it's that level of wanting to learn from the other person because we've been, uh, we've been humble before God and we realize that we have no business telling God, oh, we're on your side, don't worry about me, I'm, I got it all straightened out. <clears throat> and uh, so a lot of it goes right back to that fundamental relationship with God. And once we've said that to God, I think we're free to say it to other people.